Hey everyone, it's Brian from Raid Leader TV, bringing you our guide to the last boss of Crota's End, Crota himself. Make sure to check out DestinyLFG.com in the video description to find people to raid with. There's generally a large amount of people looking for groups just to defeat this guy, so if you're trying to do that, they should be able to help you out. And in order to begin the fight, all members of your fire team have to stand within the vicinity of the summoning crystal in the center of the room that you spawn in. You'll know you're close enough when your screen turns green around the edges. Have everyone stand there for a few seconds and you should be rewarded with a Presence of Crota debuff, which will permanently disable any health and shield regeneration unless you are holding the Chalice of Light. So what is the Chalice of Light? It's an item that can be picked up from the middle of the room between Crota and where your group spawns that allows the person currently holding it to regenerate their health. And I say currently holding it because the main mechanic of this fight is taking the Chalice from one another in order to restore your health when your shields are low. To take the Chalice from another player, just run up to them and hold X. The person currently holding the chalice will have a big blue emblem floating above them, so they're pretty easy to find. Make sure to communicate and allow each other enough time holding the chalice to actually begin regenerating your health. Because there's about a two second delay between picking up the chalice and receiving its effect, and no one will benefit if everyone in your fire team is desperately trying to steal it from one another. It should be noted that as of the recording of this video, there's a cheese method for this fight that allows you to bypass the chalice entirely by removing the presence of Crota debuff. That's allowing everyone on your team to regenerate health at all times. So if you want to take a look at how to do that, just click the annotation on the side of the screen, or check the link in the video description if you're on a mobile device. The reason you don't see us doing that here is because, unlike the bridge encounter, this trick won't completely change the strategy for the fight. It will just remove the element of health management from it and take the edge off and make everything a bit more manageable. I definitely recommend it. The second mechanic of this fight is taking care of the sword bears. So obviously the ultimate goal of this encounter is to defeat Crota, but unfortunately it is impossible to lower his health using any other means besides the sword, which is dropped from the sword bear when you kill him. Now comes the tricky part. When Crota's shields are completely depleted, he will kneel on the ground for 3-4 to four seconds, allowing the person holding the sword to run up to him and swing a couple times while he's incapacitated. So you have two different attacks while wielding the sword, and the most efficient order to attack him with is right bumper, right bumper, right trigger, right trigger. So for PlayStation players, that's R1, R1, R2, R2. Now remember, you only have a few seconds while he's kneeling on the ground, so as soon as you get those few hits on him, you're going to want to hightail it out of there before he kills you. Your fire team will then begin firing at the shields once again to lower them and inform you of when to jump up with the sword and swing. If your team is well coordinated, you should typically lower the shields, jump up, and damage him with the sword twice each time before the sword disappears and you're forced to get a new one by killing another sword bearer. After a period of time, Crota will change positions from the front of the room and run over to the right side. This is why your group should be standing on the top of the left staircase instead of the right, as otherwise you'll have an angry demon standing on top of you and hacking away at your group. It's still possible to perform all the duties of a shooter or sword bearer when he's over there, but jumping up to him is a tad trickier. Just make sure to coordinate well with your fire team and you should be alright. After a while, Crota will then move back to the center of the room, following a repeating pattern of center, right, center, left, center, right, so on and so forth. Every time he goes to the left staircase, two ogres will spawn in the room, so it is imperative that your fire team regroups inside the building one floor below where you just spawned, the same place you started for the last fight. Take the time in there to pass around the chalice and regroup, and soon the two ogres will appear in front of you through the doorway. Just take them out from the safety of your cave and then wait for Crota to move back to the center of the room before relocating back to the top of the staircase. Now, that's the entire strategy for defeating Crota, but there are two additional challenges you should be aware of during the fight. The first is that just above the staircase you're sitting at, three knights will spawn in the alcove you hit in during the previous encounter. Two ranged, also known as boomers, and one melee knight. Just be sure to call it to your teammates as soon as you see them so that you can focus them down immediately. If ignored, they will likely be the most common cause of death for your group, which leads us to the second challenge of the encounter. Every time a member of your fire team dies, Crota will summon his Oversoul, which is a very large green sun that appears behind him. It's tough to miss. Your fire team will have a very short amount of time to damage the Oversoul enough to destroy it, and if you are not able to destroy it in that time, it will automatically wipe your group. So that's it for the last boss of Crota's End. If you liked these videos or found them helpful, be sure to drop a like below, and subscribe for more similar content in the future.